Since this channel has now been up and running for well over a year, this is as good a time as any other to look back at an early entry in the Under the Lamp series called Gender and Sexuality, Skepticism is Good. It is not my best video or the one I'm most proud of, in fact, some of the points I made were in retrospect rather flimsy, but it does completely epitomise what this channel is all about. If my analysis series had an alternative title, it would probably be the other side of the coin, because whenever I begin picking a subject apart, I'm looking for another angle to approach it from, another perspective which differs from the majority. Often my initial judgments are called into question, and that's healthy because it's only by constantly critiquing ourselves that we can stay open-minded and avoid confirmation bias. You should always strive to consider, and I mean really consider, every possible point of view, even if it ultimately leads you back to where you started. That is the philosophy Midnight Chimes MLP was moulded around, it's the reason why I have no regrets about about making scepticism as good, even though as some pony generally quite liberal minded, and I use that term cautiously, you already know what I think about those kinds of labels, it was challenging to write. I was challenging myself by creating it. Recently I finished a module on my degree about sexuality and subversion and it has certainly been enlightening. Now I have the means to patch up some of the holes in my original arguments and go into more detail where I might have previously held back. But first I want to address a comment from the lost narrator who says, the fandom has been one of the most welcoming fandoms I've been a part of, and I myself am constantly pushing for everyone to feel welcomed, no matter what label they identify with. Something which many of us seem to forget in our tirades of cynicism is that, yes, on the whole, bronies are friendly and welcoming, those who aren't are a loud minority. I discussed the phrase love and tolerate in the original video, and how it can be misinterpreted as meaning blind acceptance. Well, another common misinterpretation is that love and tolerate is meant to be an accurate signifier describing the nature of the fandom. It is better to think of it as a goal or objective, a value we look up to and strive to emulate. I do not live in an imaginary world of sunshine and rainbows, I know the fandom has its issues, but that doesn't mean we can't always be aiming to do better. Now returning to where I left off earlier, the LGBT movement is structured around labels like transgender and this can be problematic for a number of reasons. If a label isn't clearly defined, any individual can migrate towards that label and embrace it to mean whatever they identify with. Now the term gender is very slippery. I was first introduced to it as signifying the arbitrary social expectations that stipulate girls liking pink and playing with dolls and boys liking racing cars, etc. In other words, masculinity and femininity, which are purely constructions of society. However, the gender in transgender it would seem refers to something psychological and internal. You have issues such as gender dysphoria, medically recognised as a mismatch between someone's biological sex and the way they feel underneath, leading in extreme cases to physical discomfort. It surprised me how frequently in seminar discussions the term gender was brought up without ever stopping to clarify what exactly we were talking about. Masculinity, femininity, social gender nonconformity and transgenderism all became stuck together as one indistinguishable mass. For LGBT rights to be taken seriously, let alone for academic discourse to be undertaken on the subject, it needs to be clear when someone mentions transgenderism whether they are talking about a real psychological condition, or a male who is particularly feminine and vice versa, because there is a big difference. That is where the scepticism comes in. I have a male friend, completely comfortable with his gender, who when at school sometimes claimed to be a girl on the inside, and even used a feminine name for himself. It is worth considering as we look to identify trans individuals at an increasingly early age and explore treatment possibilities, that it takes a certain amount of time for people to mature and to really know themselves. And, as with all things, we need to be wary of seeing what is not really there. I'm Midnight, and I'll see you next time.